274 Robinson, just waiting to tidy the place up. Bushes in the front garden, could do have a nice light trim, nothing excessive. Just going down here, look, we'd pull that one out, that's dead. Uh, but other than that, light trim, light trim on this, this is a uh, Japanese box, give that light trim. I'd snip out all the uh, the weeds in here, in the flower bed. Um, the silky gum looks fine. This bit of rosemary, that looks pretty good, just a light trim. But you can see, look, there's been no snipping done around the tree and on the fence line. Roses could do with a little dead head. Uh, this climbing rose maybe give that a little tidy. I would take this hibiscus down below gutter height. It's cottonwood hibiscus, they grow real quick. So we chop the top off that entirely and uh, bring it in. Um, trust me, in, if we don't do that, I can just get out of hand really quickly. Uh, another rose here that could do with a prune. Um, dead ivy on the wall. It's quite difficult to remove that. Uh, but more that we need to have a look at and have a real hard think about. We've got some ivy coming here over the fence. I can take that back. That is not a problem. But what I am concerned about is this ivy here that's coming out. Um, so I checked. It has pulled the fence over, and you can see these big strong branches here. There's the fence. That's on a hell of an angle. What I'm worried about is if I remove the ivy, I think that the ivy is the only thing holding that fence in place. So if I pull that ivy off, I think the fence will fall down. What I would suggest is we have this fence replaced, and when they before they come in to do that, I take the ivy off there and then. Uh, but that's that's a big job and we need to coordinate with a fencer and everything. Also this tree here That needs to go. Look at that. That's just That's that's obviously wild seeded here. No one's planted that uh, But look look at it. Um, that's gonna cause issues that needs to go All right, and just heading out the back So what we've got here, I think, is a situation where they, whoever's been here had a mole but no snipper because we've got areas that needed to be snipped, like down here and down here that are pretty feral. Um, but the main area of the lawn looks like it's been reasonably well maintained, uh, but not the edges, so my guess is no snipper. That's fine, we can, I can sort this out. Uh, out here, um, just give this as a New Zealand Christmas, just give that a light prune. Umbrella plant, just round that up, make, fix that up. And then all around the sides, you can see it's not been edged. Um, diosma here, that's pretty good. That's about as tidy as diosmas get, to be honest. And you can just see all along, this is all asbestos as well. And uh, down there, just need a tidy as well. Um, yeah, that's, so it's basically, it's just pruning and snipping. And, you know, we'll obviously run the mower if it's tidy it up. But I'm still going to say this would be a once-off job. Uh, the retic doesn't work. The bore has seized. Uh, so to sort that, I think it's about 1800 for a cheap Chinese pump, but it's going to be more than that because uh, it's old push button. And as you and I both know, tenants won't push a button to water their gardens. It needs to be automated. And that's another 1500 to do that. Um, I reckon you'd be looking about three grand to, to put a bore in and automate it. Uh, and that's that's not including fixing all the sprinklers because uh, I can tell you one thing if you if you replace all that and fix it all up and push go you're going to find about 80% of the sprinklers are blocked not working need to be replaced broken uh, whatever so um, if they want to do that I can provide a quote but I I'm, I said three grand to replace it but I think uh, at the end of the day you'd be looking somewhere between four to five depending on how long that system's been out of action for.